All right. So you are welcome back to the com concluding part of this uh, uh, SOFOS AD integration. And uh, the last time out to set up our Active Directory infrastructure, and we created two users on the two different departments. Was one user is in sales, while the other user is in ICT. So let's get into the SOFOS box. And this is the SOFOS box. And to set up a single sign-on in this box, we are going to go down to authentication under configure here. So we'll click on authentication. And of course, here we have servers. Uh, so what we are going to do is to move to the right hand side. We are going to see add button here. So we'll click on add. So we want to add an external authentication server. And so far support a couple of authentication servers, third party authentication. Uh, the one we are going to use is Active Directory, but that's not the only one that so far supported. Uh, there is Radius Authentication to Sophos, there is an LDAP server, we have Takas Plus, we have eDirectory, so all of these are third-party authentication servers supported by Sophos. Uh, in our own demo here, we are using Active Directory. Server name, which is the name of our Active Directory server, is Domain Controller 1, that is DC1. Uh, server IP address is 172.16.16.20. And um, connection security, uh, we are going to use plain text connection for this demo. Uh, you can also use a more secure connection, SSL TLS, uh, which requires you need a certificate. So uh, a digital certificate will be required for that. You'll be using port 636. Um, so we don't have certificate server set up yet. So we're going to leave authentication plain text. It's not safe, but then we use it for now. Um, it's going to open up port 389. NetBIOS domain is Fibertrain. So you know that our domain name is Fibertrain.net but the NetBIOS is Fiber Train and AD user, um, that is uh, the username of our server is administrator. Okay, so now we have to enter the AD server password. All right, so we have entered the AD server admin username as well as the password. Display name attributes, we're just going to type display name here this play name and uh, email address attributes it will be mail domain name that is fibertrain.net and then search queries so where exactly in our active directory do we want to search for user database so we're going to add our search query so our domain name is fibertrain.net so we're going to see dc equals to fiber train um, dc meaning domain component and then we'll put a comma and dc equals to net okay so our user database in the active directory will be found in the domain component of fiber train and then domain component of net so we'll click on add and we can click on test connection to see if the server is able to talk uh, if the firewall is able to talk to the server and sure enough the connectivity test was successful. So we have to click on save to save this setting. Okay, so our AD server is going to show up here, but you see an exclamation here. So it's telling us we should have used a secure way, which is TLS, uh, but we decided to go for plain text. Okay, uh, so what we can do now is to begin to import uh, the AD user database from the AD server into the Sophos box. And how to do that is at the right hand side here, you see an icon here. Um, this icon here, meaning import. So we click on it. So it's going to open up uh, this window and this window allows us to uh, do certain things. So we're going to scroll down here and um, scroll here. All right, so what you can do is to start the import. So the import group wizard comes up and here uh, can I go to full screen? All right, I can. So um, it's asking us to select the AD groups to import. And um, of course, we already entered a search query before when we are setting this up, where our groups are located. Is in DC equals to fiber train, DC equals to net. And that's where we have our search query, our, our data, user database is located. So click on this icon to pro proceed. All right, so the software should be able to reach out to the AD and AD should grant the SOFOS access. So here you can see that we are inside the AD. Um, or our users is not in the built-in user uh, folder, is not in the user folder, rather it was inside the OU, 
Fiber Train Limited, you have to expand it. And here you have to specify which OUs you want to import, which groups, if you have groups, you want to import, as the case may be. So all our OUs we want to import will fall under Fiber Train employees. So we have to expand Fiber Train employees. We want to import everything here, uh, even though marketing HR, we don't have staffs or users created for those for now, but we want to import all of them. So admin, uh, finance, um, there is one more left, which is ICT. So we actually have only sales and ICT that have uh, users created in them. So uh, once we have selected all the things we want to import from the AD server into the Sophos box, we we'll click on this icon here to progress. All right, so now we can specify what these people should have access to in the firewall, surfing quota, uh, access time, bandwidth policy, uh, network traffic, all those stuff. So we we'll just leave all this uh, default and we'll make progress to next. And, um, groups to be imported. These are all the groups that will be imported. We have sales, marketing, HR, these are actually organizational units, admin, finance, and ICT. All these will be imported from the AD server into the SOFOS firewall. All right. So, and they will say, yeah, those are the things we want to import. So we can go to next. All right. So you said groups displayed in summary will be migrated to the device. Are you sure you want to continue? Sure. We want to continue. And, um, go to next all right so i think the import is successful so import group wizard successfully completed all the groups are imported successfully and attached to the selected policies uh, so we close this guy this wizard all right so that's how the import is done and uh, one more thing we need to do here is uh you know you know first off we started from the under configure we went to authentication and we added our ad server and by the side of that ad server that we added we saw import wizard, which we followed along. And now that it has been imported, still under this authentication, we have to go to services. So click on services. You see by default, the firewall is using local database for authentication, which means the locally created users and groups in the firewall. But now we have option to use AD. So we are going to tick AD and the AD will show here. We can drag the AD up so that the AD database will be preferred and if the firewall is not able to contact the AD, it will now go ahead and use its own local database to authenticate users. Okay, so in this order of preference. So once this order of preference is selected, we can now go ahead and apply the settings. So as it is now, are you sure you want to update the authentication settings? Sure, we want to update it. So as it is now, the AD will be preferred. And um, if you go under users in this firewall, um, the users we have before now, is uh, test user and test two user which we created in the last class uh, but if we go to groups uh, here uh, we should be able to see the import we made from the um, ad so you see that we have sales ou uh, which is pulled out from fiber train employees in the ad uh, we have marketing we have hr we have admin we have finance and we have ict so um, these have been imported into the firewall now, it's very, very easy now for us to quickly create a policy and um, attach this policy. Uh, so what I can do is go to rules and policies. And um, this is the one uh, firewall rule that we have created that gives us access to the Internet. Uh, so we can click on this firewall rule, uh, which is allowing traffic from the LAN zone to the one zone uh, so that the LAN users have access to the Internet. So on this firewall rule, uh, when you go to match non-users, uh, which is where we can, uh, we actually allowing anybody, any user, any group. If you remove this any and click on new item, uh, you see that we have option now to select users from the active directory. So we have a user inside um, ICT, I think, a user called Shemu, and the username of that, uh, the password of that Shemu is uh, AAA111 hash. So we are going to allow the user and uh, we also still allow this guy. Okay, so we are allowing the two. This is the locally created user and this is the user integrated from AD. Uh, so now we are going to save settings. All right, so now what we need to do to test this, we know that we can actually go ahead and download the single sign-on application for Sophos and have it installed on the client device and we'll be using it to authenticate. But 
Uh, the easier way to do this is to um, just go to from HTTPS for slash for slash the firewall is 172.16.16.16 colon 80.90 okay so this is the so far some um, authentication page and uh, so here we have a user in active directory um, that is called shim and the password of that user is aaa111 hash now this is the active directory credential so this user is not created locally in the sophos box and we'll click on sign in so what it means is that the sophos will have to talk to the ad server and try to verify if this particular user credential is existing in the ad all right so uh we can see that say uh, we've been authenticated into the sophos firewall we should be able to access the internet. We signed in as Shen. And just to confirm, if we go back to the AD server um, running on the virtual machine here, we'll come back. I think the server must have hibernated. Let's try to log into the server. All right, so uh, logging into the AD server and going into ICT OU um, under the ICT, we are going to see a user called Shen. Just double check to see what the user log on uh, the username of that account is the user logon name is Shen. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that with the AD user, we've been able to authenticate into the Sophos firewall. So a single sign on, it simply means that uh, once you are authenticated into your system, you come to work in the morning, you log into your system once, you'll be able to access anything. Uh, so we are using the uh, captive portal logon page to test this, uh, to make it easier for users who might have to download and install uh, the Sophos single sign on uh, clients authentication software uh, get it installed maybe using group policy to push it um, across all systems client systems on the network have it installed and then with that uh, people can easily be authenticated and have access to network resources so you can see that uh, this integration is working fine uh, so from the Sophos point of view uh, the Sophos is able to see um, the users that we have the user database we have in the active directory server and is allowing users from the Active Directory to authenticate into it. Uh, so you can see uh, somebody from the ICT OU in AD called Shenwu has been authenticated into the Sophos firewall. And so uh, Shenwu can have access to the internet now. So this is how far we are going to go on this um, Active Directory and Sophos firewall integration. We have set up AD for single sign-on and we'll configure the AD part, we'll configure the Sophos part and everything is tested and is working fine. Thank you so much for tuning in. And bye for now.